Welcome to the quarantine edition of Two Consoles Too Late. With everything going on and being unemployed, I've had a lot of time on my hands. I recently decided to reread Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. It's not a great book, and the movie was far worse. Cline references the Sword Quest series, amongst other things, which got me curious about the Atari and the series itself. When I was a kid, I had the Atari 800XL, which is now a collector's item. Damn, I wish we hadn't gotten rid of it. I had Pitfall, Frogger, and a few other games, but I got nostalgic, so I decided to buy a flashback. I didn't want to buy a vintage Atari, so I went ahead and picked up the Atari Flashback 8, which, including Pitfall, has a Sword Quest series. I also picked up an Atari t-shirt. Why not? The console itself is a bit cheap and clunky. There's no reset button and the menu graphics aren't great, which uses a crappy AV input. In hindsight, I should have gotten the Flashback 9, but for 18 bucks, I'm not complaining. The Atari Flashback 8 has all your classic Atari games. First we'll start with Adventure, the game that was the impetus behind Ready Player One. Of course we know about the famous easter egg and I have to admit, I never played this game until now. And I probably won't play it again. I might just to find the easter egg, just to say I did it, but not a great game. Next we have is Yar's Revenge. This game was developed by Howard Scott Warshaw, the same person who developed E.T. and was scapegoated as the end of the Atari era. I highly recommend the documentary Atari Game Over, which shows the dig for E.T. cartridges and that Atari was on the path to destruction. One game did not bring down an entire company. Alright, next is Breakout. Hey, Breakout! Thanks, Steve Jobs. Oh, that's right. Steve Wozniak basically made the game. And the Apple IIe. I preferred Arkanoid. But now we get to Pitfall. Good old Pitfall Harry. It was a quasi-Indiana Jones adventure game. I loved this game as a kid. Mostly because getting hit by logs made it sound like you were farting, but finding treasure was fun too. And exploring. The sequel, Pitfall 2, for the Atari was apparently much better. A sequel would then l later be made for the Super Nintendo and the Sega Genesis. But then finally we get to the Sword Quest series. Originally there was supposed to be four games. Earth World, Fire World, Water World, pre costner and Air World, which was never released after the end of Atari. Here we have Earth World. I like this game because it reminds me a bit of Zelda. The game was based on the signs of the Zodiac. Different rooms are different signs of the Zodiac. Different rooms also gave you special clues. Unlocking the clues gave you a phrase from the comic book packaged with the game. Each numbered clue was the page and panel of the comic where there was a word. I will definitely get into this game. Definitely. But I just can't get past the damn waterfall. 